Urban legends, alligators in the sewers, eating eight spiders in your sleep per year. Urban legends are the modern versions of the folktale, but how about the urban legends about comics? In an industry that's been for so long closed to the public, only recently having their history chronicled in books like Sean Howe's Marvel Comics The Untold Story, there are numerous examples of scuttlebutt, rumour and so weird it's true stories that have been passed around by curious and creative fans at conventions and comic shops. In fact, there's so many it's kind of difficult to know where to start, but fear not, for I am Will, back from wrestling gators in the sewers of New York City to bring you the 10 strangest comic book urban legends. Number 10, The Hulk is Green? for budgetary reasons. After being bombarded by gamma radiation during an experiment gone wrong in the pages of The Incredible Hulk number one, Dr. Bruce Banner was transformed into a huge, muscle-bound, small-minded monster with grey skin. There's plenty of conspiracy theories as to why the palette swap occurred. Some believe it was down to miscommunication within the office, some that it was part of the story, some that the creators simply had a change of heart. In reality, changing the skin colour across that very first issue is down to the way comic books were coloured back in the day, which is to say that the stingy publishers used the cheapest possible method since profit margins were particularly slim at the beginning of the Silver Age. Hulk was designed to be grey, but colour separations meant that a lot of the time he turned out a different shade of grey or a different colour altogether. Deciding to pick one tone more sympathetic to the four colour printing process, Marvel changed him to green and the rest is history. Number 9. Finland banned Donald Duck comics due to nudity. A widely reported favourite urban legend, apparently Disney's feathered foul with a speech impediment had several volumes of his comic book adventures pulled from the shelves of Finnish libraries. What did the seemingly harmless Donald Duck do to earn such censorship? Well, isn't it obvious? He wanders around nude from the waist, despite keeping his torso clothes, and he cavorts about with Daisy Duck without them even being married. What actually happened is that the city of Helsinki wasn't doing so well financially, and one of their proposed cost-cutting measures was to stop buying Donald Duck comics to stock in the Principality's public libraries. Number 8. Marvel renamed X-Force to stop Rob Liefeld getting royalties. The early noughties were a time of transition for Marvel Comics. Struggling to find their way out of bankruptcy, the company had been trying everything they could to try and make money, including licensing their characters to anybody who asked, and constantly relaunching titles in an effort to keep things fresh, new, and attractive to new readers. This included, in 2002, a revamp of the series X-Force, Cable and Deadpool, which were also renamed X-Statics, X-Soldier, and Agent X, respectively. The titles hadn't been posting great sales under their old names and intimidating issue numbers, so trying out a new moniker and taking them way back to number one was a foolproof way of boosting profits. Or was their intention altogether more sinister? Following the relaunch, there was a conspiracy theory floating around that the real reasoning behind renaming the comics was so that artist Rob Liefeld, who had a hand in creating all three comics, would stop getting extravagant royalty checks from the financially flagging company. Ignoring the fact that any supposed contract Marvel had with Liefeld would have remained valid regardless of a title change, there's the more obvious fact that no such contract existed, and the pouch-obsessed artists hadn't received any royalties from Marvel in years. Number 7. A fan came up with the Justice League. The era of social media has given fans more access to their favourite comic creators than ever. Whereas before they were limited to letters pages and fleeting meetings at conventions, now fanboys can interact with writers, artists and editors in real time over Facebook, Twitter and Reddit. And there's some benefits to that sure, but many creators have had to start pointing out that fans suggesting storylines or ideas to them is a bad idea. It puts them in a tricky place legally, they can't use the idea and not give credit, but if they also already had a similar idea on the go, they have to toss it out before the fan thinks they've been ripped off. But that's not actually a new problem, as the story of Larry Ivy will attest. According to legend, this passionate comic book fan and author dabbled in writing and drawing titles himself sometimes. In the 50s, he regularly pitched ideas to DC editor Julius Schwartz, and in 1956, one of those ideas was an update of the company's unused Justice Society of America property. The pitch was rejected. Undeterred, Ivy made a similar second effort a few years later, this time with the original JS 
JSA members, but under the new name, the Justice League. It was rejected too, but the Justice League turned up in a 1960 issue of The Brave and the Bold nonetheless. So what gives? Well, the Justice League were actually just a bunch of Silver Age heroes teaming up, which is sort of a no-brainer as far as ideas go, and not what Ivy pitched. Number 6. The real-life Kitty Pride had to change her name. Shadowcat's real name, Kitty Pride, was actually taken from a friend of the creators with whom he had attended Alberta College of Arts in the early 70s. He had simply meant it as a fun little shout out to a pal, but for the real life Kitty Pride, it became more of a nuisance, or maybe a massive inconvenience. As the character grew in popularity, apparently so did the examples of Pride being harassed by fans who wanted to get in contact with the namesake of their favourite phasing ex-person. In the 90s, Kitty made the executive decision to start going by the professional title of KD Pride to try and again regain some of the anonymity she had lost since becoming a comic book sensation. So this urban legend is actually kind of true, but it's not like she changed her name legally or anything, as the stories would have you believe. Number 5. Wonder Woman's creator invented the lie detector. William Marston is a fascinating dude, but sadly this particular quote-unquote fact about his unusual life isn't strictly true. Despite having a fun sort of parallel to Wonder Woman's lasso, imbued with the power to get people to tell the truth. Amongst other things, Marston was an early pioneer in the field of lie detectors and put forward a design for a machine that could tell if you were fibbing by measuring your blood pressure. The famous polygraph test, the ones you always see in films hooked up to people and drawing little lines on a rolling sheet of paper, actually measures heart rate, breathing and skin conductivity in addition to blood pressure. So one out of four ain't bad. Number four, the human torch got replaced so kids wouldn't set themselves on fire. When Marvel's first family made their second venture to the small screen in 1978, they found themselves replacing one of their number with a wise cracking robot. Where Mr. Fantastic, the Invisible Woman and the Thing all appeared in the NBC cartoon, the human torch found himself superseded by Herbie. The plucky android created especially for the tune has since been ported over to the comic books, where he was not quite as successful in giving Johnny storm the boots. But just why the torch had been relegated from the team he made his name on was unclear for years, giving rise to speculation that it was down to the network's concern that kids watching the show might be inspired to flame on, in a way that was less heroic and more fatal. As it happens, much like a lot of these real-life stories, the real purpose behind keeping Johnny Storm off the screen was far less interesting than the rumour. In fact, he was left out of the cartoon's lineup because the rights to the Human Torch character were tied up in a mooted live-action pilot Universal were working on with him. Number 3. Jimmy Olsen and Jason Todd nearly died of AIDS DC were never ones to shy away from hot-button topics, so naturally during the AIDS epidemic of the 80s, Jim Starlin suggested that the company kept up its reputation for dealing with real-world problems by giving one of its characters the deadly virus. In an office memo, the editor asked for suggestions of who could be the one to contract HIV and eventually pass away during to complications caused by it. One suggestion was Jason Todd, who had recently replaced Dick Grayson as Robin in Batman, would be the most deserving candidate. Jimmy Olsen, meanwhile, had only just made his way back into continuity following the Man of Steel relaunch, but ended up being selected as the character who would die from AIDS. If it's true, it doesn't sound like the most sensitive way of handling such a tragic disease. In fact, it is all true, as Stalin has confirmed both that Jason Todd and Jimmy Olsen's stories. Number 2. DC and Marvel were going to swap characters The long-awaited Marvel vs DC crossover series was either great for business or a lame story produced only to make a quick buck, depending on who you ask. At least they went the whole hog with the dimension-skipping premise, having fan favourites duke it out and culminating the shenanigans with a few fun months where the two companies combined to make Amalgam Comics. It turns out that the ending of this major comics event could have been even stranger and epoch-shaking if the legend is to be believed. Apparently, DC and Marvel had intended to leave behind a remnant of the crossover, even if by the end of it everything had seemingly gone back to normal. That remnant would have taken the form of a character trapped in the opposing company's universe, with the rumour being that Daredevil would be marooned in DC Comics' care and Catwoman in Marvel's. Actually, this idea was discussed very early on in the talks that eventually led to Marvel vs DC, but it was decided that the legal implications, including the royalties and copyright for both the comics they appeared, 
printed in and the eventual reprints were too complex to make the idea worth going through with. Number 1. Every Story About Steve Ditko by all rights, Steve Ditko should be one of the most famous faces in comics, standing alongside Smiling Stan Lee in each of the Marvel Masterminds media appearances. Ditko was the artist who came up with Spider-Man's historic threads and co-created many of the character's nemeses during the early years, along with relaunching the Hulk and coming up with Doctor Strange in collaboration with Lee. And yet, despite being one of the principal architects behind many of Marvel's most famous characters, Ditko remains relatively unknown about comic book fandom. In the place of any real public persona, countless folktales popped up around Ditko. There's the story that a couple of fanboys happened upon Ditko outside of a party and decided to snap a pic of him knowing that photos of the comic book legend were few and far between. Noticing the flash and the retreating offenders, Ditko hopped in his car, ran them down and stole the camera. Ditko is still the very definition of a legend in comic books, a man so mysterious that people continue to invent stories to fill in his absence from public life after his death, that somehow managed to be even stranger than the comic books he's created over the years.